towards heaven tonight father we are most grateful to be called sons of God we did not deserve that but your predestinated will you sent us a prophet to drop down on merited predestinated grace as our wedding band that we had been engaged to Jesus Christ and father we are looking for consummation Father, may you bring down the Holy Ghost tonight. That's the, that's the main issue. If we can only be filled. For those who are looking for God tonight, Jesus. I pray dear Lord, you look upon the people tonight. And give them, Lord, the desires of their hearts. Let those who are sick receive their portion of healing tonight. Those who need the Holy Ghost, give them God their portion of the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is the bride's inheritance. We thank you, Father, for tonight. May you bless our heart, Lord, in this fellowship. We thank you for all in Jesus' name we pray. And the church says, may we sit there for a little bit. Thank you very much. Well, I'm excited tonight. I am feeling good. And when I feel good, the Holy Spirit feels good. I'm really feeling good tonight. I'm high up in my spirit. Thank God for the atmosphere and the meetings. Amen. I want to thank God for all the ministers. I want to also thank Brother Charles for hosting these meetings. Thank you for your burden of love, for your little contribution to the kingdom of God. May God bless you and your family and your church. Amen. Amen. So greetings from back home. The little church in Freetown. We thank God for the grace of God. And the church asked me to give the convention their greetings. And on behalf of my wife, Sister Sarah, sweet Sister Sarah. We're happy to be in Enugu. We love you. And we thank God for this time of fellowship. I'm trusting God that God make this moment an eternal moment with God. So we can meet God face to face. I, I know the challenges many of us face. We believe. We believe. See, but Brown has to preach adoption. And the first part of adoption is to place the position in the believer in position. See, because scripturally, all things are supposed to be possible to them that believe. So, belief should make way for possibilities. So, that takes a positioning. And so, Brother Branham had to be given a voice. And that voice was an angel. A manifestation to make belief possible. And that should be our position. When you say, I'm healed, you are healed. 
because that's the only way belief grows if you keep believing and nothing is happening it kills your faith many people get the backslide because many are christians for so long and they've never had a miracle from god they don't even know what a miracle is and that makes it hard for your faith to grow and that with all who said this morning you cannot function properly as a christian without the supernatural we've tried to underplay it but you can't underplay the supernatural because that's your real origin and what becomes spiritual faith to your heart must, must first be a mental faith because perception is reality virtuality is reality so all your what you call virtual is really real because man is always a product of his imagination so what you conceive in your mind is what you become so if your mental faith is right it affects your physical as well so we thank you for all the preachers so i'm trusting god by the time this service is over you will experience the greatest miracle a change of being a change of life not just a struggling christian but one that knows i met god face to face jesus changed my life you can pinpoint your miracle and where it's coming from can somebody say amen to that church and when you put your finger to your miracle the devil cannot deny that because god is always there to back it up that is my bath that's where i'm coming from can somebody shout hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah praise god amen so shall we stand to our feet i want to thank god for brother aka the convention was open with prophetic utterance that this this meeting nothing will overshadow you than the holy ghost i believe god will honor that tonight i want to thank you for all the ministers the things they preach i believe all the previous meetings was to raise your faith up into the spirit because once you get into the spirit you begin to function normally then to be a christian becomes normal you don't have to struggle anymore because you are back in position as a believer can somebody say amen to that church so therefore let's turn to the bible tonight i have a little subject and a little thought i won't stay very long sons of god coming back but the theo said manifested sons won't step out by faith so then i'll be stepping out by faith but i have one inspiration from exodus chapter 7. god told moses he said see i've made thee a god unto pharaoh so tonight let's turn to first of all the book of um Romans chapter 8. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Olu, for this morning. Brother Dili, that was a newly discovered gift. God, God bless you, Brother. I appreciate your taste in the Word of God. Amen. Brother Olu, Brother Theo, thank you very much. Bringing us back to the covenant, the confirmation of the covenant. Amen. Romans chapter 8. I'll read from verse 19. I would like to see if I will just continue on from where Brother Olu left this morning. You know, Brother Olu is a, is, a, is a good player. He knows how to lay the ball right on your feet. I think it's like Macy and somebody else. He just knows how, how to lay the ball on track. So he has, a way of, he has a way of bringing the word and it just makes it easier to score goals. So, so tonight, it makes it easier for me to score goals tonight. 
and we're going to score some goals tonight. Can somebody say amen? Hallelujah. Glory. Romans chapter 8. It reads on this wise. He said, For the honest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity not willingly, but by reason of him who had subjected the same in hope. But because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the chain of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which are the first fruit of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wait the redemption of our body. Hallelujah. I want to quickly give you a scripture, lest I forget, from Psalms chapter 16, verse 5. Keep it in your mind. Psalm 16, 5. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. Thou maintainest my Lord. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. And let's quickly turn to the book of um, Exodus. This was God calling Moses for a commission. Sending Moses, giving Moses a commission to go to, to Egypt. Exodus chapter 7. Hallelujah, praise God. So I'm coming there tonight. Amen. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. So God was telling Pharaoh how he would do it. Because we understand when God called Moses to send Moses forth, Moses had a challenge. His challenge was taking back this message is not a problem. But how would they believe me? How will they know you sent me? How will they believe me? Amen? And so God had to give Moses two signs. So the giving of the two signs was for the people to believe Moses. Because the principle of faith that the angel told Brother Branham, if you can make the people to believe you, that's a principle. That's why you see Brother Branham will say, people will go to witch, doc witch doctors, they will, they will be healed. Like in the days of the Beatles, people on wheelchairs, step into their show and they walked out of those wheelchairs and they came back to the Branham and asked the Branham you said only God heals how come people go to the Beatles in their show and they walk out of their wheelchairs because it's the faith because faith works by a law and every law is only guided by a principle so if the principle of faith is right God will always meet you on that principle. Can somebody say amen to that? Can somebody say amen to that church? Praise God, amen. So God told Moses, of made thee a God unto Pharaoh. He said, but Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you. Amen. Sorry, please. Okay. Okay, so he said, I will hearken Pharaoh's heart and will multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that I may lay my hand upon Egypt and bring forth mine armies and my people, the children of Israel, out of the land of Egypt by great judgment. 
and Egyptian shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth my hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. May God bless this word tonight. May be seated. Amen. So as I just said tonight, I want to see if I can come up from where the other left of the night. And I pray God gives us faith tonight to receive a one from the Lord. Uh, why do we like to go back to Genesis account? Because that's our origin. We will never know our beginning, our true beginning, until we go back to Genesis. And Brother Branham took us even beyond that. And took us back to before things actually began. Before time began. Before angels were even created. Before the earth was even created. Before there was a heaven. Brown said we existed. And that gives our existence our eternal past and eternal quality. And on, until that is drilled back into your heart, it will be hard for you to have faith. Because the Holy Ghost doesn't make you a son. The Holy Ghost only comes to confirm your sonship. Because your sonship was something God did back in his mind. It took a prophet to identify where we come from. That when the seven seal books came with an abstract. Bram said the abstract actually means something that could search it way all back to the beginning. So, 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 our, so our beginning in real, in real sense, before even God started saying, let there be, we already existed. And Brother Branham tried to give quality to, to our thoughts in God. Because everything you see on the face of the earth was actually a thought in God. Because because of God's omniscience, God knows everything. Bram says, even how many times the fly will bat its eye. That's how complex God's mind is. All these things going on in the Middle East, all these Isis boys, God knows about them. You see, but that thought did not make up an attribute. Lucifer was also in God's mind. All the angels that fell, they were in God's mind. But when a thought becomes an attribute, that's different thoughts. So Malachi for connected our thinking in God as an attribute. Meaning that we are not just like thoughts that exist in God's mind, but our thought was God's very nature. That's really who we are. That's my identity. Can somebody say amen to that? You have a choice to either believe that or don't believe that. That is the eternal section of the book. Ram opened the books of life. There is a regular section in this message. I've had Pentecostal preach many things that Ram preach. But they are preaching from the regular section, just the regular life. But in this same message, there's an eternal section. A section in God that did not begin. The prophet connected you there. That is your connection. Let me see that. And only Brother Branham could do that. Only the prophet. Now listen. Like Brother Dele was bringing for justification. Justification, Branham says, you never seen. The scripture says, we all have seen. If you, if you take that scripture from the humanistic... Your reasoning will tell you all the mistakes you've made. How do you believe you didn't ever really sin? But in the Holy Ghost, because only God didn't sin. So he that is born of God cannot sin.
Oh, once lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Let me see that. So our origin even goes beyond the Holy Ghost. Bible said the Holy Ghost is even a temporal gift. He said the real gift is your soul that existed before there was a spirit. And you see, but the Bible gave quality to our soul. Like the Holy spoke this morning on spirit. We were not just spirit. But you see, in our spirit soul was this thing called theophany. A theophany gives quality to your soul. It frees that soul from deception and falsehood. Because a theophany knows all things. And only God knows all things. That is a category. The angels that fell, that was deceived in heaven. They were a spirit that came out from God. But that spirit, the nature of that spirit, they didn't have a theophany. If they had a theophany, they would not have been deceived. They would have known that Lucifer is not God. So even though they were a spirit, but the quality of their nature, the quality of your nature, of your soul, is the same as the nature. So the quality of a man's spirit is what his soul knows. Can somebody say amen to that? Can somebody say amen to that? So Brother Branham said, where we once lived, in our souls, we lived in this thing called theophany. He said, when God created man, he created him a theophany. That is why Adam could not be deceived. Because Brabham says, Adam soul, though it was a city form, but it was a theophany. You can't deceive a theophany. You cannot lie to a theophany. The theophany content in your soul is what frees your soul from falsehood and from deception. Can somebody say, imagine that church? That is your class. Can you see that? you see that? You see, man, God, man had two consciousness. There's a lower self-consciousness. That was Adam's two seven man. The humanistic consciousness. But Adam had a higher self. So Adam's ultimate was not just earthly. What really he was went way back beyond his earthly limitations. Because Adam had a self up in heaven, which is what we call Genesis 1 to the 6. That was his God self. So when God put Genesis 1 to the 6, Abraham came to show the connections. Because before Adam even became, before God formed him from the earth, Abraham said Adam's theophany was already moving the God of Eden. Even after God formed him from the earth, his theophany was already there. Abraham said it was leading the animals like the Holy Ghost leads the church today. But Adam was not still a conscious, he was not still, he was not still, he didn't have consciousness of the higher self. So God had to make the connection. And when the connection came on Adam, he became a living soul. Then he had a higher self-consciousness. Then he knew he was not only a humanistic person, even though in his body he was made in the image of animals, but there was something in him higher than his lower self. And that was the God part. That was the God created path. Can somebody say hallelujah? So you see, when Adam fell, when Adam fell, Adam lost consciousness of this higher self. You see, and that's why you need the Holy Ghost. Because if the Holy Ghost doesn't come, you can only see yourself relative to the humanistic. That's your height, that's who you are. 
But there's another self of you that is in the spirit. Can somebody say hallelujah? These things that Malachi 4 is speaking about. These God parts, you are a part of God. You are a gene of God. You need to experience that other part. That part that relates you to God. If that part is not there, there's no connection. You are still a human. I'm saying you can only live in the humanistic realm. Can somebody say amen to that church? And that's where the Holy Ghost is so important. But I only gave a quote this morning. When the Holy Ghost comes to your hand, you become a twofold being. Any man that receives the Holy Ghost knows a being is stepping to you. Another man is stepping to you. Hallelujah, praise God. It was not just a spirit. When I received the Holy Ghost, a being is stepping to me. I knew a being came by me. And that being has kept me alive all this while. No man can challenge that. I am a Holy Ghost filled man. That is my higher self. That is my next self. And when I get up into that realm, anything is possible. Can somebody say hallelujah? That is why you need to have the Holy Ghost to function in that realm. Let me see that. Let me see that. Let me see that. Now when, as long as Adam had this higher self-consciousness, in the state of his higher self, he, he had unrestricted access to fellowship. And that's where Jesus Christ came to show you the kind of fellowship that Adam had with God. Jesus in St. John 5, 19 could say, the son can do nothing of himself. But what is it the father do? And the father loves the son. And sweat the son all that he doeth. So you can't have prop. You can't, your, your faith can't be potent. If you, are not, if you don't have a relationship with God. Your fellowship with God. You see because Jesus, why his faith was potent. God will tell Jesus what to do next. What he should do the next second, the next minute, the next day, the next week. Hallelujah. That was how Adam was. He didn't just give those names to those animals by himself. He was under divine order. How to name this animal? How to name this animal? So his faith was active. When he fell, he can longer access fellowship. He now had to come through a mediator. And that's how, that's how we are up to now through a mediator. But how can a true son for you to talk to your father except you have a mediator? That's why the blood age has to come to an end. The age of mediation has to come to an end. Because when sons of God take back that book, when the fullness of God comes in you, hallelujah, praise God, the entire Holy Ghost comes into the church. Hallelujah. Then what is now a mercy seat becomes a judgment seat. Because the entire life of God comes back into the church. Can somebody say amen? And that brings an end to the blood age. Then we would need any longer a mediator to mediate between we and God. That access between you and God in terms of fellowship is taken off. So when Adam lost his higher consciousness, when he fell from this higher consciousness, he lost his access to fellowship. That was why he could now run from God. And how can any Christian or minister have faith when God is not talking to you? You're only talking to yourself. You're only praying to yourself. You can't have faith. Because the voice, the living word, is what gives faith. You can go on your knees and pray and God speaks back to you and God tells you do this, do this, do this and you know you cannot fail. Hallelujah! Can somebody shout hallelujah? When Adam lost his fellowship with God, his faith went down. Then his unlimited or his, his, his the free access he had to the tree of life was taken away from him. Because God put cherubims to ban that. Then his dominion to the earth was also lost. He became an ordinary man. He became a five cents man. 
he, he began to live his life in partial realization. He lost his perfect consciousness. He lost really who he was in the spirit. He became a slave. But God came to restore us back to that. That is why our restoration is not complete until we go back to Eden. Where our fellowship with God is no longer restricted at all. You can access God at any time and God can speak to you. You can speak back to God. Because that is sonship. Where a man can step on the pulpit and say the Holy Ghost said. And say God said. These are the men we need for the hour. And we are coming up to that church. Hallelujah. The faithful ministry will be men that will have thus the Lord. Because the prophet said the bride must have been a thus the Lord. Oh, she keeps still. And this is our season. That we can step forward and say God said. These are manifested sons. These are real sons of God. Let me see that. Let me see that. Let me see that. You see, right now, your portion of Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost is our inheritance, way back before the beginning, God divided himself into what seeds? Those, then, and each portion of those world seeds was God himself. It's, it's like Peter said, who do, uh, Christ said, who do men say, I of man, I am. It's, Peter's revelation was prophetic. He said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. You can't have sons outside son of man. So it was the same Jesus, son of man, that came back in Acts chapter 2 and divided himself and gave each man a portion of himself putting them back into the holy spirit bringing them back to their higher self their higher consciousness their perfect realization because in that state you cannot sin let somebody say hallelujah that is your true state of justification because the holy ghost in you the seed in you has never seen you can't impute it to the holy ghost the holy ghost is your state of innocence the holy ghost is your state of perfection and the holy ghost my virgin and the holy ghost you never seen hallelujah when the holy ghost comes upon you sin consciousness goes away hallelujah praise god then you don't have to walk fearing to fall to make a mistake no the holy ghost is there it leads your footsteps it guides your footsteps it gives you power it's a realm of consciousness Let me see that. People do many wrong things to me, but I'm not just conscious of hurt. That's the honest truth. You can't really hurt me. I don't understand this thing hurt me. I might know you say something wrong, but once I get in my spirit, I feel comfortable. That is what the Holy Ghost does. It will tame your tongue. It will give you self-control. You won't just talk anyhow. Because there's a superman on top of you that controls you. It controls your life. It controls your temperament. You just don't talk anyhow. You are under control. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? You're not some barbarian. Many of us, we just get loose. Well, I will tell him off. You don't have the Holy Ghost yet. If you have the Holy Ghost, He won't just let you tell somebody off. He will tell you, keep quiet. Don't do it at a time like this. You are a child of God. Because we have to measure up to the image of Christ. That is our measure. He's the stature, praise God, amen. So my measure is not a man. It's not a minister. It is Jesus Christ. I must be like Jesus. That is my measure. That is my standard. Let me see that. Before I got the Holy Ghost, you know, I stammered. I was very hot tempered. Very hot tempered. That's how I knew when the change comes. I was a very rough guy. But when God filled my soul, I realized all my attitude changed. 
so i know where i'm coming from i i don't care how low down you are when god comes into you he raises you up to a next level you are no longer ordinary hallelujah you become a supernatural being let somebody shout amen that is your work with god you don't react to issues on the humanistic level because you have a higher consciousness you assess things from the level of that consciousness and tonight i prayed for you in my room that god almighty will give you a genuine experience by the time you leave these meetings you will know that another being is working with you somebody else is working with you jesus said i'll be with you always you need to experience that you need to know somebody is working with you he's talking with you he's leading you hallelujah jesus christ did not leave you comfortless the comforter is here tonight the holy ghost is here tonight that is your higher level of consciousness once you strike that you are connected back to god you become a living soul then god is vibrating in you you feel god in your body you feel god in your temperament you feel god in your nature hallelujah praise god and that is your desire the seed of god in you is crying out i want an experience experiential faith let me see that That is man's divine realm. When the prophet came back to make the connection, until we come to that spot, the Holy Spirit is here tonight. You see that? When we measure ourselves in the light of our failures and mistakes, we can get nowhere with God. That means my stress tonight is this higher being consciousness. Whether you have the Holy Ghost or not, that's not the issue. Just get the Holy Ghost. Once you get it, it will help you understand a lot of things. We can't talk on these divine things from the humanistic realm. But the whole pre this morning is that we are angelic beings. A man might come back and give you a quote. Abraham said, God didn't make us angels. And we use that quote to rip you of all your angelic substance. That is his seed. But it's like Paul said in Hebrews 1. Which of the angels said he at any time, This is my son. And that was Jesus. So that was Paul calling Jesus an angel. But in sonship, he was higher. Because Paul said, Which of those angels that God could say they should worship him? So even the realms of angels, sonship is different. So in the light of your position in God, we have the same body as angels, but in position. Because we are sons of God. We are made to be just like God. We have the attributes of God inside of us. So positionally, you are higher than angels. But we have the same body, we have the same thing, but in position. 
That's why it is only you that can do the works that I do. Not angels. And even greater works than this shall you do. That commission is not given to angels. It's given to sons of God. To impart eternal life. How oh, somebody should shout hallelujah tonight. Somebody should say hallelujah tonight. That is who you are. Let me see that. Imagine a Christian who has been ripped of his angelic substance and connection. How do you operate? But Brown said, before the world began, I will let my own brain on. He said, God created my being, my spirit. I wasn't conscious of that. But I was there before the beginning. And all of you sitting there. And he said, those that have the spirit, he said, they are a part of those angelic beings that rotated off of God, that resisted the devil's lie. That's the connection there. You can't whip that connection at all. So you are candidate of association with the angels. Because God's theophany seed is inside of you. Wherever you are, angels come to minister to you. Angels are your ministering spirits. Because you are in a higher order. We are sons of God. Now tell yourself, I'm a son of God. Say, I'm a son of God. If you believe like this tonight, then the Holy Ghost can follow you. Because this message is the manna. This is what angels eat. If you don't connect angels to the church, they can't come to the church. If you don't connect angels, if you think the people in your church don't have any angelic association, what is an angel coming to do there? Then your people are dead. That is not a living church. A living church must have signs, wonders. God come down there. Can somebody shout hallelujah? That's what I know tonight. Because you are here. God's angels are here. What are they here for? To minister to you. To support you. To give you faith. To give you a church. Because you came from Elohim. You came from Elohim. Let me see that. Can you see that? Like when a child said things are through my ministry because of what I preach. I believe in angels. I believe where I, I am, an angel must visit there. That's what I tell God. Because as I move along, I know angels follow me. In the aircraft, angels follow me. As I go to town, angels follow me. Can somebody shout hallelujah? As I'm preaching, angels follow me. Glory to God, hallelujah. And angels are here tonight. You shall receive the Holy Ghost. You shall be sealed. You shall be baptized with fire. You shall be healed. Because why? You came from God. You are God's attributes. Angels, we are created to serve you. So Jesus was not just an ordinary son. Even though in body, in everything, he has the form of angels. But in status, angels bow down to him. That is where you belong. As I'm speaking tonight, angels will take my word and pack it into your heart. Because that's why they are here. Take the message and pack it into your heart. They are ministry spirit to hears of salvation. Let me see that. Let me see that. Hallelujah! God will drop an atmosphere just now. The sick cannot stay sick. If you sit on your wheelchair, you will step out of that wheelchair. I challenge you tonight. Because you were not born for that wheelchair. You were predestinated to be conformed into the image of his son. Let me see that. 
Let me see that. We are going to whip the devil tonight in ribbons. He has no place in these meetings. He has no place in your life. Satan is not invited. He has no hallelujah. This meeting is for sons of God. And you are coming out tonight. God be hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. You are going to experience God for yourself tonight. My God is not dead. My God is alive. That God still heals. That God still seals. That God still blesses. That's the God I serve. That's the God I worship. That's the God I praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. God will give you a miracle tonight. I challenge every devil in hell to hear my voice. At the sound of my voice, God will give you a miracle tonight. Let the devils come against it. I challenge Satan tonight by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah! He can't stand your way. He can't stand your way. He cannot challenge you at all. You are a higher being. The devils are trembling. The devils are shaking. Hallelujah. They will leave you tonight. All this harassment, you are going out tonight as a God over your Pharaoh. All the Pharaoh suppressing you, keeping you down. Today, they are leaving you tonight. They will leave you today. They will leave you today. Let me see that. The spirit of God is here. We take every spirit, every contrary spirit under our control. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the King of Glory rise up. Let Jesus Christ show up on your behalf. Hallelujah! This is the emblem of your victory. Let me see that. We are not confused. We know where we are coming from. We know where we are going. Now listen. The greatest test for every age. Bam says a theophany actually is the word body. But that has no spirit. Let it preach harvest time. Because the several spirit of your theophany are down here. To look for that sea jam in you. When Paul speaks of the old man and of the new man. Who is the new man? Ephesians 4.24 Put on the new man. Which he says after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Who is that new man? And put off the old man. The old man is this man. This man is not representing you fairly. Do you hear me what I said? This man you are carrying does not represent you fairly. Because that is not you at all. It's falsely accusing you. You have another man. You have a new name. Hey, hallelujah. You have a new name. Oh, Lord of mercy, praise God. I feel fire coming through me tonight. When Saul turned his back on Samuel, God gave him another heart. When he came amongst a prophet, he became another man. By the time you leave me tonight, you are becoming another man. If you believe that, say amen. I am making prophetic utterance tonight. This is divine prophecy. By the time you leave here tonight, you shall become another man. You shall become a superman. 
a man that can put Satan under control. Satan is not your class. He's not your level. He's far below you. We are sons of God. That is our design. That is our making. That's our creation. Let me see that. There was a time I preached in Congo. After the meetings, a pastor brought his son. That right in the meetings, the boy just went paralyzed. I think the told brother Etienne. Or so. so the pastor said he must go and call me. Fresh under the anointing. I said, Satan, this is the worst mistake you made. Because when I am in this state, you know what can happen. Lose this boy. And the boy step up and begin to walk. But the agent, you're a witness of that. You, we are in Congo. We are not telling you fables. God is real. God is a king. The supernatural is coming your way. Satan will not escape this anointing. He can't escape this power. He's going to be trapped. He's going to be bound. Rocko Makato Sokiba. I feel like speaking in tongues. I feel like going through tropes. I am not in my real self. I am not in the spirit. Anything can happen. The Holy Ghost can change you right now. The power of God can fill you right now. Yay! Whatever anger in your body that is seeking right now, take authority. Every disease must leave. They will not escape this anointing. The devil is trapped. The enemy is trapped. He can't find a way out. Sons of God are coming back. You can be healed tonight. You can be seen, my sister. The power of God can come upon you right now. The Holy Ghost is present. The power of God is present. Yay! Yay! This is your position. This is where you belong. Now you are in the spirit. You can take authority. You can speak to the devil. You can speak to your sickness. sealed up the supernatural being
people, seal the young people, Lord. Seal them, Jesus. Seal the young people, seal them. Father, seal the young people, seal them tonight. Give them the batch of the Holy Ghost. Young people, this is your day. This is your opportunity. This was why Inugu came. Tonight is your night. Receive the Holy Ghost. Oh, this is your day. The Holy Ghost is here right now. How to seal you up. To seal you up. Oh, yes. Sister, whatever is your desire tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lay forth my hands upon you. Stand up. Receive what we came for tonight. The power of the Holy Ghost is upon you. Receive the Holy Ghost tonight. Let the power of fire come into your soul. Let God baptize you with fire in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord God, tonight, as I hold to this sister, she came for a need. Supply the need. May she God be sealed. May she be transformed in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yikimaka Pasa Soka. Every pastor, close your eyes, be in the spirit. Because demons are going out right now. The enemy is living right now. Close your eyes. Because as you're forgetting in the church, the Holy Ghost is here right now. Close your eyes and get in the spirit. Because I'm taking authority over every foul spirit, over every contrary spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I take authority. I take authority in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, I cast you out, Satan. I cast out devils, devils of pornography, sex devils. I cast you out. I cast you out. Every demonic oppression, every sex demon, that's in your life tonight illegal occupants in your body have you booked them tonight i ask them to go go smoking demons tonight they are leaving you tonight you are called to holiness you are called to sanctification of the truth
This is the arena of liberty. This is your place of worship. This is where you belong. The devil cannot challenge you on this state. Musicians come forward. Some ministers have just been refilled. Some ministers have just been we feel. Come on, Caleb's. Come on, Caleb's. You need some refilling, some recharge. Your battery is draining down.
in the power of your love. 